Hello, Jeannie here. I'm going to tell you about the Lanchester. We had a car which was a Lanchester. I think it was about 1936. Um, it had um, an opening windscreen, so it would open at the front, which wasn't a very good idea because the Beatles would come into your eyes. Um, and it had uh, an open uh, a sliding open hatch above your head. It had four doors and um, a walnut facade. It had been quite a posh car. It had a running board um, when you stepped out so you could stand on the running board before you got into the car. Um, and it had a spare wheel at the back with a cover and, and um, you open up the bonnet with a hinged top. It opened upwards. Um, Nick, my boyfriend at the time, uh, was had bought this car. I think he paid £25 for it. And I may, may have got that wrong. And he was very proud of this car. He loved this car. And he just bought it, but he wanted it a nice bright colour. And so we went to the shop and we bought the brightest blue we could possibly get and it was sort of motorway sign blue that sort of color and we painted this car all blue and it looked lovely but first of all we put it across the road from his mother's house into an orchard we we pushed it into the orchard so that we could just get on and paint it and you know we could uh, when people wouldn't be bothered with what we were doing. So we painted this car in the orchard with apple trees around and it looked just lovely. But uh, Nick wanted to have more on it than that. He wanted he wanted a castle on the bonnet, a gothic castle. He wanted a big marguerite on the cover of the spare wheel big, a big marguerite on the cover of the spare wheel and he wanted clouds in the blue sky, pretty clouds, not heavy clouds and on each door he wanted a, a cupid holding garlands of flowers and maybe one blowing a trumpet and we we started to paint, we, we discussed all what we are going to do and what he wanted and what I wanted and in the end we got, we got done, we started to paint it and, and it was magnificent, everybody, does it. everybody kept rushing up and saying oh, wow look at that and taking his photograph, nobody took colour photographs in those days so sort of they hardly existed, I'd say they don't exist unless you were a special but, um, you know, it was your business. So we had some fun painting this car and we took it around and everywhere we went people would stop us and the police would stop us just because they wanted to have a look at it. And <laughs> and I remember a policeman came as we just painted it and we decided to go to Germany in it. So the policeman got in it and held the front, held the steering wheel and it came off in his hand and he said this, well you can't go to Germany in this car and he got out and he kicked the, he was saying you can't, you, you, you can't go only five yards in this flipping car and he kicked the, the, um, the hubcap and it fell off and, <laughs> and he went away scratching his head, he didn't know he just thought, they must be crazy. Anyway, we went to Germany in it. And we went to Würzburg in it to collect Sally's stuff because Sally was finishing working in Würzburg. Sally was Nick's sister. And I'd known Sally for many years. And so um, we wanted to see her and have fun in Würzburg for a little while. And so we went, that's where we went. We also went to the, 
the exhibition, the Brussels exhibition. Well, on our way there, we were in there. Um, anyway, this car, we we took it home. People loved it, and the police loved to stop us so they could have a look at it. Um, and we kept it at my mum's house, and I went to Italy on a travelling scholarship. I was away for three months. Nick had been visiting my mum when I was there, but when I wasn't there, he didn't bother. And the, and the car stayed outside my mum's house. And the key was probably on the window ledge. And my next brother down thought, oh, hmm, I like a car like that. Oh, yeah, I've got a car like that. <laughs> and jumped in and drove it to school. <laughs> so um, he, I don't know what he did because we weren't there. But he used to go to school. He, he was uh, in, in class with John Lennon. And he'd take John and his friends and they'd, they'd tell him to, to take the car around Coldestones Park. And, you know, he, they'd all, all jump in the car and have a joyride. And they loved that. And then when they were doing gigs in town, um, they get to stand to drive the car to take them there and to get, take them away as again, again as well. So that was, that was, so it became picking up John and his band and who were the, called the Quarry Men, or maybe they were called the Beatles in those days, I don't really remember. But, um, but he was, John was still at the school which was called Quarry Bank which was a school that my dad had gone to and my eldest brother had gone to, my next brother and my next brother, those three brothers had gone to that school and my dad. So it was like all, you know, it was like a family school with, with all our kids, all our family, the, all the boys in it. It was a boys' school. Um, so um, that's, the, that's the story of the Lanchester. And the sad story is my very, very obese relatives got in at the back seat, two of them. The spring broke, the old-fashioned spring, and it broke, and that was the end of that. So then it went for scrap, and that's the end of that story. But I'll show you a picture of it, but I haven't got a colour picture, because um, in those days it was 1957, 58, 58 it was, <laughs> and it was, it gave us some fun. Thank you, bye-bye. The wonderful, colorful, mysterious world, 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 the wonderful, colorful, mysterious world,